Hey guys, uh, you remember the story of Jonah? He, he's a prophet in the Old Testament. God sends him off to this place called Nineveh to go preach the word to, to the Ninevites. Jonah doesn't want to. Uh, so he does what any of us would do, and he's, he tries to run away from God, right? He gets on a boat to this, go into this place called Tarshish, and uh, it goes great. No, it doesn't. It doesn't go great at all. Big storm comes, weather, this whole thing. Jonah says to the guys eventually running the boat, he's like, I don't know why, this, this is my fault. I'm, I'm trying to run away from God, so you should just throw me off this boat and everything will be fine. Uh, they don't really want to because that's insane, but they do it anyway after uh, doing a few different things. And so they throw them off. Everything's fine. Jonah gets swallowed by a fish, right? And of course, this can't be true. That's a different discussion. But either way, God, God's word says he was swallowed by a fish. And he's swallowed by this big fish and he's in the belly of the fish. And then here in the belly of the fish, other than the part where he told him to throw him off the boat, uh, Jonah does the, the first thing that might be actually kind of a good idea. And that is he turns to God in prayer. Jonah is in uh, a horrible situation, disgusting situation, horrible situation, and he turns to God in prayer. He calls out to God. He cries out to God. He says this. This is uh, chapter 2 from Jonah, verse 2. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. And from the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. And do you find it easy to call out to God for help? Do you find it easy to just stop what you're doing in the midst of, of just God's, even God's wrath, as Jonah found himself here, in the midst of uh, the consequences of sin in the world around us, in the midst of troubles and trials, in the midst of disgusting whatever? Is it easy for you to call out to God for help? Now, there are times, uh, especially for those of us who have called on him before, where it, it, it's a second nature to us. We're just in so much distress or so much trouble that we just go right to him in prayer. There are other times that we might be almost sort of timid about it. Timid because of our stories, because of our past. Timid because of our, our recent mistakes or errors or sins. Timid because we've done stuff like running away from God, like Jonah did, more times than he did and in bigger ways. Timid because we've tried to follow our own plans before, and it takes a lot to admit that they didn't work. Timid. Timid because we might just not believe the promise that he hears us when we cry to him. There's a story in the book of Mark, chapter 9, where this, this father's child has a, a demon possessing him. And his father says to Jesus, he says, heal him if, if you can. Jesus goes, if I can, of course I can. Anything is possible for him who believes. And this father, in this moment of kind of like, yeah, I probably said that wrong. He says, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Calls out to him. I, I, I do believe. Help my unbelief. And that's kind of a funny little thing. But I think it's something like Jonah running away. Being caught up in the belly of a fish and saying, now I turn to you, God. Now I do. Save me. Help my unbelief. It's a good picture for what it looks like for us to be made children of God. We're the people who have been uh, found in unbelief and yet are brought into belief through the gift of the Holy Spirit and the faith that he gives us. It's a good picture of what it looks like to be followers of Jesus. We've got pasts. We've got stories from uh, 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 a decade ago and from a month ago and from a week ago and from yesterday and maybe right now you're in the belly of a whale crying out God save me, rescue me from the depths help my unbelief the cool thing, the promise for you because you're a follower of Jesus is that you know that he hears you and that you know that he has not left you or forsaken you the story of Jonah goes on, and this usually we don't really remember much beyond this point, but it, it is a doozy. He, he goes on to Nineveh, and he does, he does some, reluctantly does some work for God, and then he goes up onto the side of a hill, and he just kind of like crosses his arms, and he waits for God to wipe him out. And uh, when God's not doing it, because Jonah thinks they should be, uh, he, he gets kind of grumpy with God, and God does some more work punishing him, and it ends with God saying, basically, John, you don't, this is about my plan, not about your plan. 
In other words, the reason I keep going, I, I go on here, and the book actually ends that way. He says, why shouldn't I care about this city that I made that's full of all these people and even a lot of cattle? And then the book's over. The, re the reason I bring it up is that God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing around you. He knows what he's doing with you. And he knows what he's doing in you. And, and you can count that as a good thing because if it's just up to me, I, I'm just running away toward Tarshish. I'm just climbing on boats, trying to get away, or finding myself in the, bellies of, in the belly of a whale. Brothers and sisters, because of who Christ is, and because, what he, because of what he's done for you, you can call out to him today. You can cry out in your distress, in your unbelief. You can cry out from the belly of the fish that you find yourself in, whatever that means to you today. And you could say, rescue me, save me. And because of Christ Jesus, you can trust that that, that, that will happen. God's peace be with you. Uh, I, I pray that you will find yourself uh, in a place that is uh, one of faith and confidence tomorrow. Amen.